anything can be hacked and everyone. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Omnic Lab. We are a podcast that is focused on the strategies inside the game of Overwatch. We help you learn through trial and error in the lab, even if things get a bit crazy and blow up. But this week, we are going to be brewing literally anything and everything we got in the lab. We got a few extra beakers. We got a few extra things and catalysts for you to stir up some new stuff this week because we brought on two guests. That's right, two guests to talk about the console mega show. We are bringing in... Back, one of the most requested guests from the console community, which is CS, Top 500 PlayStation 4 player. What's up, CS, hey, hey, hey. Jake? Oh, I, I guess I'm Fat Albert. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to start as Fat Albert, oh, oh, okay. Fat Albert, but I did. Well, time to go change your gamer tag. And we also <laughs> brought in Omnic Meta's webmaster and your friend in the stat business, Switch. What's up, Switch? Hey, how's it going, guys? This will be a, a fun discussion to focus on console. So looking forward to it. Yeah, no doubt. And coming all the way in from Georgia after feeding his cats, you've got your <laughs> McCrazy I play games. What's up, Andres? <laughs> what's up, what's up? Yeah, you gotta feed the cats. If not, they'll start knocking everything out of my studio over here. And <laughs> we, we don't want that in the middle of the stream. Oh yeah. They Georgia Andres Studio turns into Junker Town in under ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and I I'm your host, Rob May, um, all the way from the land of the rising sun, which is right now lower than dusk. So we are going to just get right started here because I think CS has got uh, work coming up soon. And we're hoping to also keep him in for the majority of the show this time around instead of having it be bowing out. But we got a lot of stuff packed for you this week. Our show notes are some of the longest that I've ever encountered um, in prepping for a show. We've got news. We've got blue posts. We've got patch notes to catch up on. We've got some really big data sources for you to compare PC um, and console. We also have some topics that CS has prepared himself, as well as some community questions in the email and Discord in um, particular. So let's jump right into some news. So the first thing is uh, just a, again, reminder update. Andres and I will also be attending BlizzCon this year. Uh, we did get our media passes last week, which was absolutely unreal to get this kind of news and as a collateral to that uh switch is also going to be going uh so we're really excited to go hang out with him while yeah. we were there and um in addition to that um switch has also been working with our other admin uh cs and others to plan a community game night for you so on october 27th the admin and the moderators will be running a community game night um, that will be basically a kind of a quote-unquote all-day thing starting around noon, depending on your time zone, and going really, really late in the in the a.m., depending on, where again, where you are. But this is going to be run by the community, so that Andres and I may or may not show up. Uh, we're going to try to, but we didn't want to make any promises this time around to make sure that it would happen. And, uh, yeah, so if you want to go hang out with the community, it'll be a really fun game night. You can show up and pop in there. And uh, normally, this is the part where I would give you a quick recap of Switch's website, uh, the Omnic Meta, as our partner. But I'm actually going to turn it over to him right now since he's here. So uh, yeah, thanks, Rob. We've got a bunch of different articles that I've, I've put up over the past couple of weeks. Um, one, There's one that would be kind of interest to some people that's focusing on the Korean meta. The Korean meta is much different than the Western meta. They, they like particular types of heroes, such as Genji. They also really like Anna, so if you want to look at that, and there's also another one that we'll probably discuss later in the in the show, which is focusing on the new patch with Mercy. Did it fix Valkyrie? Did it fix the massive number of resurrects <laughs> that she's getting? So if you're interested in that, you can check it out at um, omnicmeta.com. Very, very cool. 
And the next thing on the docket here will be a very quick thing. I left a little bit of the details in the in the show notes for you, but basically there's a huge discrepancy on Reddit that um, Bill Warnicky, I believe is how you say his name, Bill Warnick, maybe, uh, addressed from the Oceanic server had a big issue. And the synopsis, to give you a synopsis of this, basically the servers randomly shut off during peak AU times as the original poster claims that about 150 is the minimum ping for oceanic servers on a week. Um, and then it'll just randomly jump to like 300 when he's used to like 30. And as somebody that has pretty poor internet, I always thought it was my bad internet at playing from Japan. Um, but actually this hack is a known issue that had needed to roll out a fix. And so Bill says this particular issue is affecting several data centers, including Australia, Japan, South America, and Singapore. Sincerest apologies for those impacted extra tanks for the details from the threads. So my ping hopefully won't be as crazy with quote unquote packet loss, which is actually the servers just randomly leaving. <laughs> it's not packet loss. It's just like, <laughs> peace out. I'm out. <laughs> so I'm really, really excited to go try out some comp after this. Uh, adjustment. But I'm going to pass it over to Andres for our next blue post, which is quickie about deathmatch. Sure thing. Um, we know that there are only five slots available for arcade at any given time. Is this the one that we're talking about? That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think there's been some discussion about people wanting to have a few more of the modes, you know, like the rotating ones, capture the flag, their steam deathmatch, Deathmatch, um, then the holiday events kind of like rotate in and out in here. Um, but I think a lot of people want a few a few more of the modes, right? People want to play Capture the Flag. Um, and Jeff's response was, it will come back. We're working on some changes to allow modes like No Limits and the 1v1 mode to come back a little bit more often as well. Yes, CTF2, basically all modes, the short, medium term fix is just making sure those modes can show up again. Um, so we get a little answer from that. A, a reminder for everyone, the modes are not entirely gone from the game. You can still create them in custom uh, game browser. I guess the challenge there would get, you know, to get the people to join your game. But you can still make the games, just not in the arcade part. Yeah, I wouldn't... Um, I don't know if people are wanting more than five slots in the arcade anyways. Because um, that's going to come at the cost of, of higher queue times, which is actually pretty mm -hmm. important. Uh, especially... Well, I'm, I'm on the show, so I get to talk. The console aspect, yeah. <laughs> on console, there's a lot less people. You know, it's about the last stat I heard, which a while ago was about 10% of PC players. I don't know if that's true, but especially if you're talking about like a specific console like PlayStation. So queue times can really be like super long. So if, sometimes when I'm waiting for arcade, it could be five, six. I could spend more time in queue waiting for an arcade game. I just want to play Mystery Heroes, but I'm spending more time waiting and actually playing. So if you add more slots at any given time that's just going to spread out the sense. player base more and it's just going to make me have to wait seven eight minutes to play arcade so i'd much rather have game modes maybe that's not my favorite all the time and rotate and actually be able to play them than have all however many like 15 game modes they've made and you know have to wait 10 15 minutes to actually be able to play it so right you know. I, I think I, I want to make a comment that's kind of interesting there's this tension that blizzard keeps adding more game modes this time, you know, they just added de Team Deathmatch and uh, Free For All and everything. But yet, they keep always having these seasonal events. I mean, we just had Lucio Ball. We're having Jungenstein's Revenge. Next is going to be Maze, what is it, snow, Snowball Offensive or whatever. I hope not. And it, it, it will be. It'll come <laughs> back for awful. sure. <laughs> but I think the point is, is that you just, you're left with a few weeks, maybe, that you can they can kind of rotate and play around with some of this. So, that you know, they it's great they've added all these modes, but, you know, there's no... I think like you yeah. you said CS, there's like so much competition that they don't want to put them all up all the time, right? There's like 20 different yeah. game modes now. It's like Doritos Locos Tacos at Taco Bell. Like they're always changing. <laughs> they're always changing. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I really miss those tacos. But let's keep going. Uh, CS, you want to talk about the ultimate changes that have now hit live servers? Yeah. So that patch came out, what, I think last Tuesday? Um, maybe, oh, maybe, a while, maybe it was a while ago, but it's, it's a pretty big deal. So the ultimates, all ultimates that have a cast time or a channel time, um, can now get, once they're interrupted, they, you lose it 
immediately instead of having the little bar that really slow it really quickly depleted to begin with. But um, I, and when I heard this, I actually didn't think it'd be that big of a deal because they had already changed it a while ago to make them deplete faster. They've changed a lot of ultimates already, so th this to me didn't seem like a big deal until my first PlayStation afterwards, and I get halfway through my Genji voice line, and I feel like a you know a total BA, and I I get flash banged, and I I'm mashing triangle to try again. Actually, that's not true because for Dragon Blade, one of the few um, things that when you get hacks done, you get it again. But for the rest of them, you just you just instantly lose it, and and it's a big deal. It makes you have to think more about when you're gonna ult, um, and it's I think it's gonna take a while for people to get used to because they're so used to press pressing the button when they think it's gonna do the most damage or have the biggest impact without thinking of other people's abilities and how to how they can stop it from happening. So it's a big deal. So in general, um, there's three different types. There's cast time, transformation, and channeled. Cast time might be something that for instance, like uh, when Soldier 76 activates his visor, he's that's the cast time it takes him to start. So things like that can be interrupted. by you cast. Can, yeah. Yeah, really like quick. like that segment, like right before he activates the visor, where you can see him take his hand like up to his visor and he he says like the his little words before you can stop firing. That is the cast time. Or another example would be when Reinhardt is about to do Earth Chatter, he raises the hammer and you can visibly see him. He's about to do the alt. And right before he does it, there's like a small delay. Same with Lucio. All these characters have a, a small cast time, like between the time you press the ultimate button and when the ultimate actually shoots out. Yeah, even Supercharger, which I didn't think so. I, I guess so. She do, it does take her time to put down the bongo drums. I haven't played a lot with her, yes. but I'm mm -hmm. sure that's frustrating. Just in, in her, I mean, to an Orisa player, you probably you take it out and it's half bongos are halfway on the ground. If you get flashbang, it's stunned. I'm sure the Orisa player is like, well, the bongo drums, can it just drop to the floor? Like, I already have it halfway out. Why does it need to go away? But it does now, and you don't get it anymore. Um, it also makes Sombra, I think, even more powerful than she already was because now her hacks interrupt all of the fo following ultimates like uh, Nano Boost, Supercharger, Blizzard, Earth Shatter, and even Diva's Call Mech, which is a pretty big deal because you have to be more careful when you ult because you might not be able to call your met back if you're in that animation and she hacks you. So yeah, even more powerful Sombra. And so, I think that's so a this... huge change. The... Sorry, say, go ahead. I was just going to say, does this mean we're going to start seeing Reddit uh, highlights of a Junkrat shooting Reinhardt up into the air, Sombra hacking? Well, he's in flight. Oh, no. And then he just completely <laughs> wiped out the Earth Shatter. Oh, oh, <laughs> We're going to see that. Yeah, that will yeah. happen, especially when the characters get thrown in the air yeah. and the cast time gets a little longer. She's going to have yeah. more of a chance. But I think, I think the change is more intended so that, <clears throat> like, um, when you're a good Sombra and you already have your target picked, you know, you're. You can see who has ultimate and who doesn't have ultimate with uh, with Sombra, right? As long as you're hacking and stuff. Mm -hmm. So out of all the heroes, you have like the best perspective on who is kind of like who should be the prime target there. Um, and if you pick yeah, your targets right, I think that what would happen before is, <clears throat> let's say the beginning of the fight was happening and um, Sombra started hacking you as Reinhardt or something. What a lot of people would do would just immediately blow the ultimate as, as it was happening because you know like if you didn't then you're gonna have like six more seconds of not being able to do it so now um i think that this allows you so that if you're getting preemptively hacked um you're not gonna be able to just unload the ultimate like that it's just gonna like cancel you anyway right and yeah. this to me is like basically flattening the playing field of ultimates in which you hack um, because not just hack, I guess, but also stun and CC, right? Because like freeze and flashbang also fit under the same category of hacking or stopping of an ultimate. And it basically flattens the playing field in that you almost always were able to do this to channeled abilities like fire ultimate or reaper ultimate, where once you hit the button, it begins and it continues until the duration ends. And then when you're hacking or stunning or stopping that motion, then it's very clear that the ultimate has stopped and you lose the whole charge. So what they're doing is they're basically making it so that yeah, it makes sense during other things. And the, the channel versus the transformation is also different. So they're basically labeling Genji to have both a cast time. And then once the cast time is done, he is effectively, quote unquote, transformed as a bastion has transformed into tank. Right. Those are transformation ultimates. 
So when you stun something while they're currently transformed, quote unquote, that will then mean that they are just stunned or hacked in that moment and they can't use their other abilities. That doesn't mean they can't fire. That doesn't mean they can't slash. They can't shoot the tank rounds. Like, that's not, ha by definition, being hacked or stunned. It just means you can't do something for a set amount of time. It doesn't actually interrupt an ultimate. So, therefore, it operates as a normal stun or a normal CC or a normal hack. And to go along with this, we have to keep moving. So let's talk about the console Genji bug that is now fixed. Yeah, so this came with the latest patch, too. Um and I, I even posted it on Reddit because I thought this is a really big deal that I guess never gained too much traction. Um, there, there was a bug on the PTR where Genji could slash during the cast time of his ultimate. He could just, whenever he wanted to, so you'd press, well, for the console, it's triangle, to start your ult. And in that time, if you just mash the slash button, your primary attack, it would do an invisible slash that would do damage. So that what that basically meant is you could insta-kill somebody like a support, if you it's, you'd start the animation, you'd be right next to say like a an, a mercy because it's always mercy, right? That's who you're always trying to kill. And when when the when you're casting it, you wait till the very end of the animation, you slash, it'll instantly reset for a second slash because the game thinks your first slash is when it's over, so it takes out that delay. So you can basically insta kill, and you could have you could insta kill anybody. Um, it's a free animation cancel. It was a, yeah, it was a free animation cancel, and it was a free extra slash. It was more damage in general, and it was faster damage at the beginning. It and makes the duration last longer too, right? Because every yeah, time well, you hit a slash yeah. and land it, yeah. So it, it was basically like old Genji. Uh, it was, and it was, it was in there. It went to live for console, so it was in there for two weeks. Every Dragon Blade was could start with a kill if you wanted it to, as long as you got next to somebody. So they patched that out. It was a pretty big deal. It's gone now, but. I don't know how it got to, to consoles and not PC and how it wasn't addressed for two weeks, but it's usually really good at, at, at addressing all platforms equally. But I thought you would think they would hot fix this out so there wasn't two weeks where you'd have to be afraid of Genji's even getting close to you in the adult because you'd insta die. But it's it's fixed now. So Okay. It's probably better that right, I wasn't on the show moving. before when it was on so that people weren't abusing it. No, if you didn't know, that's good. Because maybe <laughs> yeah, you would have seen a lot more Genji's abusing yeah. the trick. So just predicating the problem at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I can tell you when it's over. I got to use it. Not, yeah. I need you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Switch, take us away with the patch notes, my man. So there's a couple of hero changes with the latest patch that also came out um, last Tuesday. Um, one that affects Mercy, one that affects Lucio. So the changes for Mercy are actually kind of interesting. I'll link... <laughs> I think we all agree that she's one of the most, actually, that she's the most popular hero in the game. A lot of people might even say she's OP. Um, so the changes are to Valkyrie her in her ultimate ability. Mm -hmm. The changes fix it that way. When you activate Valkyrie, you no longer get a couple of things. One, you get don't get a Guardian Angel cooldown reset. So a lot of people were, you know, guard, Guardian Angeling in, popping Valkyrie, and then flying immediately away after a res. The other change um, is that it doubles, did it double the resurrection range? I think it did, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Five to 10 meters. <laughs> and, yeah, five to 10. And the other change that's pretty significant is they've gotten rid of the res, they've, they've gotten rid of the reduced res cooldown. So it used to be 10 seconds when you were in Valkyrie mode, and now it's just 30 seconds like it usually is. Cross so the what they've replaced this with is giving you a free charge, because <laughs> now they have charges for resurrect. So... This gives you maximum during Valkyrie 2 resurrects if you've saved one prior to activating. So you can still do res Valkyrie, um, activate res if you want, or you can activate Valkyrie and have two reses potentially at your disposal. Um, so those are pretty significant changes. It used to be that you could get maximum four reses during that time period, um, and now you can get maximum two, so it's a pretty significant difference. We're going to talk about this more, I think, in a bit, but... Uh, uh, that's the big change to Mercy. For Lucio, there was a bug that was introduced, similar to, uh, I guess, the Genji Slash bug that CS was talking about, where uh, Lucio's speed boost, which was one of the big changes, you basically wall ride, get a huge boost of speed, and be able to launch yourself off the wall. Um, there was a bug that essentially removed that. Uh, and so now they've, they've fixed that. That's now back, and you still have that 65% bonus speed when you're when you're wall riding, when you're jumping off the wall, rather. Yeah, when you leave the wall. Yep, when you leave the wall. So uh, for a while, a lot of Lucios were kind of suffering. They're like, man, where's my speed boost? <laughs> you know, this is my, my main ability for mo you know to have mobility in the game. So that, that's been fixed finally. So 
Those are the big fast changes. Yeah. Lucio is extremely difficult to play with this, by the way. Like, extremely difficult to play. If you gotten used to the new thing, it was just like, I can't even play anymore. I can't juke nothing. Yeah, I felt so <laughs> slow and sluggish. Yeah, yeah, it really did. For the All mercy right, changes. Well, oh, sorry. I just want to say really quick. For oh, the mercy I was just change, about to pass it to you. Go ahead. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, nice. Um, it, it's, it is, I think, a net nerf. But I think doubling that resurrection range is actually huge. Because that's how you killed mercies, right? Is you used her dead teammates as traps. Because she yeah. had to get really, really close to kill him. And 10 meters is actually pretty big. I think 10 meters, it's either the radius or the diameter of a May ult. I'm pretty sure it's the diameter. So he, if you picture a May ultimate, how it co basically covers the whole point, that's how far away she can now be an ulti, which means she can be on high ground. She can be out of line of sight around a corner. Well, she has to have line of sight, but away from line of sight from you, maybe not the body. Uh, it means she can play a lot more safe and die. She's already been so hard to kill, and they didn't touch her survivability with the, with her passive healing. So it's, I just think, I mean, sure, it's a net nerf and I'm out. She can revive, but I think she'll be able to survive through her whole ultimate way longer once people figure out, hey, wait a minute, 10 meters is actually really far away. I could be way over here and basically like snipe res somebody. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> yeah. big deal. I need, to, I need to have Icy or Bio correct me here in the chat, um, but I'm pretty sure that they actually reverted this back to the original five meters and they didn't double it. Like it doubled before this change. And then they now are reverting it back to five meters. Uh, you know, oh, I think and, you're right. I think you're right. And Good. in addition to that, they uh, switch is partially right um, when you said that you that they will no longer let you um, have a free charge of GA upon Valkyrie. It's actually uh, the the free charge was awarded after you resurrect, not after you Valkyrie. But yeah. Oh um, really? When when you. When you use the resurrection ability, then it would it would pop your GA immediately, and now they don't do that at all. So the, the the thing is that's confusing, and the reason most likely that you said it was in that way is because a lot of people are going to use the resurrection in the dot. They're going to dive. They're going to res. They're going to. It's basically dive with guardian angel. You you are basically a second and a half on, while that's on cooldown, and you're resurrecting. You get the charge of GA back, and while you're turning around. You're activating Valkyrie so you can split like a banana out of that business and GA to somebody <laughs> if you if you can. And if you can't, you're usually you're either just gonna fly straight out with Valkyrie or you're gonna GA to the next target and res them immediately. And while you can still do this, the big deal was like like Switch was saying, is you res four times, right? So you res immediately, you use Valkyrie, you can res again. That's two times in the space of two seconds or less. I, closer to like one and a half and then at the end of one and a half seconds and 10 seconds again you can do it and so what happens is you've got three charges of resurrection that have been burned in the space of 10 seconds which is absolutely ridiculous and on top of that by the time valkyrie ends because if you've used your third res in the space of valkyrie you've already activated a 20 second cooldown like basically just disappearing right because you have the 10 second cooldown during valkyrie so you've effectively gained another res that you could resurrect be by the time Valkyrie's ending or right around the time that it ends before or after you can res again. <laughs> so you get four reses in the space of about 22-ish seconds if you're, if you're basically resing on cooldown. You got four resurrections in 20 seconds, 22-ish, 25-ish seconds, okay? Now that with the new change, you can still resurrect twice within the space of the two point or two ish seconds, right? The difference is you can't speed out of there like freaking Roadrunner on Route 66. You can't do that anymore because you don't have GA. You have to be way more disciplined with your cooldowns. You have to cancel it mid flight and hold the glide, which is the new change that IC was talking about here in our chat, which is you can hold the jump key to fly or glide a little bit further. And then on top of that, um, the 30 second change means you have to wait until Valkyrie has effectively ended before you can res again. So you cannot, not only you can't get three reses in the space of 10 seconds now, but you have to do the max you can do is three, three reses in the space of about 41 seconds. So you've over tripled, or I guess you would effectively quadrupled the amount of time after the second res, which is insane. Now, this sounds like a pretty freaking huge nerf. But um, as Switch would be readily, and a lot of my Mercy buddies out there would readily admit, it's not. It's more of an effective balance issue because 
survivability with Mercy is not easy, even given with all of this ridiculous GA stuff. <laughs> so um, you're not invincible, even though your passive's gone. Um, but in the traditional method, you either want to do like some people like to do where you resurrect before Valkyrie, and then maybe you pop Valkyrie in a couple seconds or a few seconds or 20 seconds in, and then you Valkyrie, and then you have a couple more seconds, and then you can res after you use Valkyrie. And then you wait a couple, a little bit longer, and then boom. But the, the big deal is that when you're granted the other charge, um, and I know I'm taking a lot of time, guys, so I'm sorry, but if you're granted the other charge, it does not effectively change the initial cooldown, which is really, really hard to, to illustrate unless you go watch a video. But basically, if I resurrect right now and um, I, I start the, the cooldown is 30 seconds. So in 10 seconds, I have 20 seconds left before I can resurrect again, right? So then I pop Valkyrie. I get a free charge. I can resurrect right, right then and there. As soon as I resurrect and it shows the display of the cooldown, it doesn't show the resurrection cooldown as being 30 seconds anymore. It shows it as being whatever you left it off at. So effectively, getting a new charge and why they worded it that way in the patch notes that is in difference to resetting the cooldown is basically making it so that you can resurrect a little bit more, but not like in this outrageous amount of time in the space of a short period, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's so kind of <clears throat> the thing there. I know it's a really complicated thing. So Andres, go ahead. I was going to summarize. Basically what you're saying is if you resurrect before going into Guardian Angel, the cooldown still follows on that initial resurrect. Even if you resurrect later, with the charge that you get on the Valkyrie. So like if you resurrect a while ago, then you b Valkyrie and resurrect again. Um, there's You probably only have to wait another like 15 seconds before you can use resurrect again, since it's taking into account the original cooldown. Um, that's what you meant, right? That sounds right. Yeah, that's okay. Well, that makes sense. I, I see why I didn't understand before because Blizzard tried to explain that in like one sentence, what Rob just took to effectively explain, you know, like, 30 seconds of talking. Super freaking so. complicated. Yeah, it is pretty <laughs> pretty hard to understand without visually seeing it or being a Mercy player. I think, <laughs> and, and I see uh, just mentioned this in, in the chat, I think it kind of, these changes in many ways are good for Mercy just overall because it changes the way you might play her. Instead of trying to min-max by trying to get a reset and get that extra res, um, instead it, it kind of, yeah, it encourages you to <laughs> enter Valkyrie mode uh, in basically activate your ultimate earlier so you can engage and kind of do it at the start of a fight rather than reactionary. You're kind of more proactive with it. So uh, you don't exactly. have to worry about min maxing anything. You just pop it when you think, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to heal, f you know, five of my players at once, or I'm going to damage boost them at once. And if they right. go down, I'll just heal the, I'll, I'll resurrect them. So right, exactly. I think it's a good change. Yeah. I really like it because what happens is you don't have to like wait and hold your res for longer yeah. just so you can be like, res peace res peace you know like that that's kind of the 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 ga is my my term for piecing out sorry but like if you if you if you res you don't have to focus hyper focus on min maxing like twitch is saying but like double res yeah you just res you just do it and then like when somebody dies and you're like i have my ultimate should i should i res here it's like well if your reinhardt goes down your team engaged yeah <laughs> like turn the valkyrie on speed to the, your sucker in there because your your GA is like god mode. Like, you're so fast. It's just like effectively hitting hyperspeed in the Millennium Falcon. Like, you are in. Like, you are right there. Um, you just res them and then you can get out of there. Um, and then you can glide. You don't have to use GA because your Valkyrie makes you faster and you can just straight up fly like an eagle. So, yeah, let's just move on. I know that this is taking a long time and we have limited time to well, discuss. This, uh, this, let's uh, get into the this is a big change. It's, it's yeah, worth it's discussing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. The the last thing I want to say about it is the the reason why I like the change is the a couple of times I was playing Mercy before the change is you were in this weird spot where sometimes you wanted to ult, but because nobody in your team had died, you wouldn't ult because you wanted to take advantage of the double res, right? Instead of just like ulting and maybe only getting one res. So there was a couple of times when I was playing Mercy that I was like, man, I really want to ult here, but I'm just going to wait for a teammate to die, then I'm going to resurrecting, then I'm going to ult. But by the time that happens, sometimes it would be like kind of a missed opportunity. So it's kind of like this weird interaction where like both of your abilities were kind of not playing towards what the team 
will want to be doing it. This way, there's no downside in doing the rest. So now you can always play to what's best for the team. Like, if you just have to ult right away without resting anyone, it's cool now. All right. Yeah, I'm not that's really good quite sure where we want to go with this next discussion because we have so much stuff. So I'm going to actually just choose Switch here and... Uh, we can we can start talking about the statistics and the pooling and the flexing and whatever topics you're passionate about and you want to cover. Let's go there and then we'll pass it over to CS and we'll kind of bounce back and forth between these. Sounds good. So I pulled together a bunch of data uh, for the podcast. There's a couple of things I think will be interesting. One thing that I want to talk about, though, um, which no one has talked about in the entire community is hero pools. Um, of course, not, people don't just play one hero, they play multiple heroes. And so the question is, a lot of people, it's a very controversial topic, a lot of people are really not happy about one tricks. People that play only one hero, one hero only, they seem to think that they're everywhere, they're the, the bane of their Overwatch existence because they're the reason that they're losing games. So what I wanted, wanted to do is just pull together some data and I'll just kind of share it. Of course, most people listen in audio, so I'll kind of tra transcribe what these charts are. So what, what I did for this analysis is look at a couple of things. One is try to categorize a player um, by the amount of time they spend on each hero. So I count a hero as part of their pool if they play that hero at least 10% of the time. So this is another way to kind of look at hero popularity in general. Um, so let's start with the basics. So what is the average size of a console player's hero pool? In season six, it turns out that that basically 80% of the console players have basically one to three heroes that are a consistent part of their pool, and the vast majority is two to three. So, if you're playing, if you have two to three heroes that you regularly switch between, you're basically the average uh, console player. Uh, most players um, fall into that range. Very few people are above four. I mean, less than 5% of players really switch and, and <laughs> swap around and truly what I would say flex. So, okay, so two to three. And let me finish this, uh, this other bit of data and maybe I can get your guys' thoughts. Second is like hero categories. Are these people only playing offense, only playing um, defense? Are they playing support? Uh, or is everyone just, you know, just playing uh, D DPS? It turns out that most people at least have two or three categories. Roughly about 80% of players have two to three categories that, that they play. So the good news is, is that when you queue in with somebody, there's a almost certain chance that that player can play at least another category. It's not just offense. Maybe they you know, also play uh, It doesn't support. mean that they will, but it means they can. It doesn't mean that they will. <laughs> or that they play it well. Or that they That's play it well. But, but they're at least playing it enough that they should have somewhat of a clue what they're doing. So what do you guys think of this? this surprise you the fact that people actually play you know three heroes they they play a couple of different categories i don't know three heroes doesn't seem like a like a lot to me that seems pretty i mean it, obviously small. it's not one tricky but three heroes seems pretty small to me especially in a game with 24 25 heroes with um every, every game's being totally different what i what what saddens me about these stats is you can see the percentage of players per tier of essentially one tricks people who only play one thing and you can see it just goes up the higher in rank that you go unfortunately like a, like a ni nice little chart yeah. the highest amount of one tricks are in gm at 22 percent 22 23 percent and that's that's pretty sad that that's still the truth is that like one tricking get i mean that's not exactly what it says but the, the more you one trick the higher like the higher likelihood it is you can go up higher in the rank so that's pretty sad but I think players just want to specialize. I mean, it does make sense. It does make sense. Like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Switch. That's exactly what I was not going with that. Because like, the more you play that one here, the better you're going to get in it. And that's why I think the uh, grandmaster, quote unquote, one tricks are getting in there, getting in there deep. But um, yeah. The some of the interesting things that I was seeing, and I mentioned this at the top of the show, is just like how low. Uh, the pick rate is for um, Junkrat in console in bronze is the the pick difference is like a is ten percent less. That 
that stat is shocking to me. I thought that he would be way more popular than the bronze bracket, even considering that um, we talked a little bit of the pre-show with CS about who he thinks the demographic of those <laughs> playing on console and those who are playing in the lower tiers the lower are. Tiers, yeah. You know, the young children that are playing with their parents or have their own console and they just got this for Christmas. You know, like they are playing Overwatch. Yeah, and uh, Junkrat seems really fun. <laughs> Yeah, he still be he still played quite a bit. It is less it is less than silver. Um, I think it, it's more about what what heroes look fun and are fun to play. Like you see, Diva, yeah. Diva's pick rate in bronze is by far and away the highest pick rate for all the tiers for console right now. Way higher than like GM, and it's it's uh it's weird because they objectively made Diva harder to play with the new patch, the new update to her. I mean, her defense matrix is half, and they added a skill shot to her. So you'd think that'd be the opposite, but Diva is in this awesome mech that you fly around and you're shooting rockets in, and she's also a comfort pick for a lot of people. So it makes sense when you're thinking about demographic is what people are going to want to play, and Diva's really fun to play. So it's hard to look at stats and just like this and just think people are playing it because it's the best, because that's not always the case. They're playing it because it's fun. Can we talk about this Symmetra stuff, Switch? Like, what in the world? Everything is positive in every tier. So, so we're looking at a chart right now that basically shows the difference between pick rates in console and PC. So basically, what what heroes are more popular on console versus PC? And Symmetra is much, much more popular. And of course, you know, someone who's a PC player, but I've always heard, yeah, and Zarya, um, I've always heard murmurs that hey, you know, Symmetra's OP on console. <laughs> you know, Tor Torbjorn's. Uh, OP on console, and I think you're kind of seeing that here. People, I hate to say that she's, I mean, she's not a hit scan, right? She's she's somewhat less mechanically <laughs> demanding. If you you're just, within you know, point of light. <laughs> you know? That's one way to so, put it. She's not a hit scan. She's not hit scan, you know? She's not that pure uh, mechanical, um, which, by the way, is my favorite type of heroes to play hit scan. But, yeah, she's getting played a lot more, um, almost 10% more across every tier. Um and that's actually she's been seeing kind of an uptick in play on PC. So she's so she's actually around um, you know she's up to thirty percent in some tiers pick cool. rate. So one in three that's games great. she's in she's in the game, according to the, the data. So yeah, she's popular. I've talked about it before, but Symmetra is just the perfect storm for abuse on console. She doesn't take. I mean, okay, sure, if you're aiming those orbs that go at one mile per hour, then I guess that's like skill projectile. But for most part, she doesn't take a lot of uh, mechanics to play it like aiming, which is fine when you're using a little jump, a uh, little thumbstick. She, and, and the best way to play against her is, is with coordination with it, knowing where turret calling out turret spots, calling out where her teleporter is um, and diving people. And there's no chat in console. And a lot of people don't even talk in console. Even when you get up to like yeah. GM and you're talking about people who are ranked 4,300 even then, maybe only two, three people are on the on the mic. Um, so it's perfect storm of just of abuse for her. She she's really easy to do well to play well, and she's really hard to play against when you're uncoordinated and you can't um, you can't talk to your team. It takes yeah. a lot of yeah. It's countered by coordination, really. A lot of those cheese comps, and and that's less on console in general. So one one I think thing it's that, like, one thing I'm gonna say too is. Um, in, in the PC, as you go up the ranks, you notice people get better at dealing with the turrets and stuff. And like even those Symmetras get really crafty about where they put them and stuff. Um, when you're playing like a Diamond or even Master, um, people take out those turrets so, so fast. Um, but I was going to say in the console, and I've been playing it, it's so much harder to get rid of the turrets just because of the way the, the movement works, right? Like doing a 360 turn on the console takes so much longer than you can do it on PC. On PC, you can precision. do like in an instant, right? Like you turn back, you hit the thing, then you turn back around, you're good to go. It didn't even take like a second to do that. In the console, you have to like scroll all the way over to the back, kill the turret. Uh, you might miss it <clears throat> because you're aiming the, in the <laughs> controllers and that's good. Because yeah. there's no aim assist on turrets, so you're just going to miss. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then exactly. by that time, you have to like turn all the way around. So I, just like that mechanic alone makes Symmetra so much better on the console, in my opinion. Yeah, I'll normally just back, I'll normally just back into the choke to, to see it so I don't have to turn around once I get there, which is probably the most uh, dangerous thing you can do. But I'll just be like, Winston put down a bubble 
and then I'll back up until I'm uh, oh, on the other side of the choke, so I, then I can shoot it, so I don't have to turn. I would go straight and turn. Um, but yeah, it's all of it just makes Symmetra so much more powerful on console for sure. Yeah. Well, I think we can probably go away from the the statistics here for a little bit and let uh, CS take the the helm for a little bit, and then if there's some more stuff that CS you want to wrap in with your discussions through the data, you could feel free. You can even jump down to Discord questions and emails should you feel comfortable. Sure, we got a lot of topics, um, but a lot of them are tied into questions. So I think I'm just going to go straight into the to the emails and questions, and Perfect. most of the topics, most of the console topics will be covered anyways. So. Um, Chris L from Xbox says, how do you balance filling versus players playing what you're best at? Do you have a rule for quitting after losing a few combats in a row? And what meta differences do you see forming on console rather than PC? So the second question, do you have a rule for quitting after losing a few comp games? That's not really, I mean, console related. You should, I, I try to for sure. Cause you just get tilted. Um, how do you balance filling versus playing what you're best at? This I think depends on, on where you are on the ladder. And, it, and it's more like a math equation than it is just looking at yourself. Because say I played DPS a lot season two. That's how the first time I got to top 500, I just said, screw it. I'm just going to spam soldier and carry my team as much as I can. But it's not just about what you're good at. It's what about what your teammates are good at too. So if you're say an eight out of 10 DPS player, if we're just ranking to 10, and you're also an eight out of 10 tank player, and you're playing with some other guy who inslocks DPS, and maybe he's an eight, an eight or 7.5 out of 10 DPS player, but he's a five tank player. Like he just, he has no idea how to play tank. Even though you may be a little bit of better DPS player, it's better for your team in full, like your team stats. If this was like, if you're playing fantasy football, or whatever, your team stats go up, you have a better team total if you, if you go to tank. I, in general, I like that. I, I like that analogy, actually. You, got, you have to somewhat keep in mind like the strengths of your team and play around those strengths. Even if, play around those strengths by mean you don't get to play your favorite hero but maybe yeah. like your second or third favorite <clears throat> especially because I mean, we just talked about how many people can only play or you only play two to three heroes and one to two roles yeah. i mean it just shows that if you're a flexible player who's played the game a lot and you're, you're proficient in say both tank and dps even though you'd rather dps even though maybe you're a slightly better dps you're probably a way better tank than they are. And so as much as you don't like it, it's probably better for you to, to, to play tank and let, let the guy who has 200 hours on Genji and only plays Genji, just let him play Genji. It, it's hard, and then you're going to lose some games and you're going to be mad. But that's what I would say. It, 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 it depends on how good you are at the roles and how good your teams are. So you, I, I mean, you got to look at their stats before you get in. You can see what they play, how, how many hours they played before you make that call because there's definitely some games you don't want to fill. Filling has a lot of downsides. That That's not console related as so so that. cs this yeah. is a kind of an interesting topic when you're evaluating your teammates to, to make this decision is it purely just play time it can't be right so, no and percentage so, yeah uh i, I kind of mean like do you observe them during the match and say hey you know maybe i'll play maybe i'll play ryan instead of you because you're, you're you know you're not a good tank player <laughs> you say it yeah. nicely of course but um, that's tricky because egos are big we right. we, we we especially uh we talk we skipped over the fact that McCree is going up on console, even though McCree is really hard to play on console and almost always it's easier to track than it is the flick with the controller. So in almost every situation, it's better to play soldier, but that is not accounting for the human interaction that people love to play this electric cowboy who's going around one tapping people, even if they can't do it, they're not good enough. So people will play So people will play McCree anyways, because even it's though flashy. It is, it's flashy and it's fun. And, and if you, if you, there's really, it's really hard to nicely tell somebody, especially somebody who's got a really shiny icon and it says I'm ranked 291 on, on PlayStation. So their ego is probably too big to where you just saying like, Hey bud, you have no idea what you're doing. Let me step in. I mean, obviously I wouldn't say it like that, but it's tricky. So it depends on, <laughs> yeah, I kinda, that does I kind of like what you say like that though. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you need to go people. from McCree to McCrazy and you're not cutting it from <laughs> You're McCrappy, dude. You're not hitting anything. <laughs> <McCrappy. Yeah. laughs> no, I don't think that would go well. So yeah, Chris, that's um, what I would say. It, it's really, it's really game. It's a game by game uh, dependence, which sucks. I wish there was a better rule of thumb, but you have to look at your teammates. And you have to look at yourself. You have to know yourself too. It's really hard to do to know yourself enough to know how good you are at at different roles, um, because we all, I think, have inflated views of how good we are at, at the game. We all. Oh, actually, this ties well into someone else's question. I'm going to move right in, unless anyone else wants to comment on that. No, question. go for it. I wanted to interject real quick because um, 
I was going to ask Switch something that I thought might be interesting based off of what you said there is I would be interested to find both in PC console or maybe a collective where people are um, comparing their like has the Overwatch community progressed in their rank like based off of their overall skill time played from season five to season six are people at a large at large climbing are people climbing and changing rank. And I don't know if that's something that your stats can even do, but I think that would be very interesting to see if somebody is climbing by virtue of how much game time they're increasing or how much game time that they have over the course of time. Is their play actually improving or are they plateauing or are they actually going down? Um, Because I talked with some people actually today from the Xbox channel, um, shout out to you guys in the Xbox channel, about the importance of playing more. And it yeah. came down to, and I'm not going to leave him um, as name, but it's a guy that's been struggling, like most of us, in the latter anxiety, both with that as well as just losing too many games in a row and you're hitting the, the, the low streak, right? And then you're getting into the, your gameplay. And what happens is, um, what my recommendation ended up being was, I was like, well, you just, frankly, it sounds like you just need to learn the game a little bit more. And the best way to do that is, A, stop playing after three losses, and B, play at least 10 games a week. And it's like, that's a very, very reasonable goal, even for people like Switch who are, you know, the dad 76 of us, right? Um, but Switch is not a bad player. I just like to throw him under the bus because he's a good friend. So um, he's actually a higher rank than I am. So um, but anyways, that's besides the point. The, the, the whole deal here that I'm trying to bring up is that I think that people don't play enough Overwatch and... Ex it, in that they don't play enough to have reasonable expectations for their player goals. I think that's a huge issue with people, including myself. Like I have really high expectations of myself for playing so little. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. Well, because you're surrounded. You're always, I mean, you're on an Overwatch podcast. A lot of people listen to Overwatch podcasts. They're, they're in the community. So you think you're, you're playing more than you are, I think, a lot. And actually playing <laughs> happens less than you probably realize if you're only yeah playing like mechanical five repetitions are not getting in right it's like, exactly it's not like, hearthstone where you could just watch the game and yeah and, and improve exactly you actually have to pilot the deck yeah. i think there's something else that people have to remember too if you've seen the the recent post i don't remember if it was thursday or friday you know the the play overwatch twitter account said hey we're celebrating 35 million players you know so now they've the, the player base base is continuing to grow right i think it's the point so there's a bunch of new players coming in, which means that everyone playing ranked, there's more people coming in. And if those people are putting in more time than you, you may see that your SR starts to slip if you're just maintaining your skill level, right? And you're wondering, why am I falling? Why am I falling? Well, there's more competition. You've got someone that's just that's coming it. in who's fresh, who's going to devote 20, 40 hours a week to plan, depending on what their, their schedule is, and they might just overtake you. So... Um, I've seen many, I've often just kind of looked at people's, you know, stats and stuff when I play in game and you see a lot of people that they just backslide. And I think it's, it's, think it's for the reasons you're mentioning, Rob, they're just not playing enough. You know, they're not staying up with the meta. They're not staying up with their keeping their skills sharp. This yeah. Something Especially good, in good diamond in where you a decay, um, just from nature of not playing at all. And then B like, if you're not playing consecutively, that's a whole nother argument at the upper tiers, right? If you're not playing consecutively, you get rusty. It's just like, you know, yeah. going to the gym five days a week versus going to the gym two days a week. Like you just, it's just not as good. You know what I mean? Like you're just not able to progress with your physical fitness at the same rate. Yeah, um, exactly. It, it transfers to pretty much any practice um, just for nature of repetition. But we got to keep moving. Oh, I wanted to, to say that I wanted to say the last thing over here that I think is very important. Oh, okay. And and Blaze and Bob actually mentioned it in the chat and is it, it very much pertains to this. And it's about active playing. Like when you're playing the game and, you know, you know you can already dedicate a bunch of hours to it, right? Like your schedule is limited. There's like two types of play. There's like passive playing and there's like active playing. And I, the way I differentiate those two is passive playing is more like you just sit down, you pick whatever, you're not being too attentive to the game. You maybe are like listening to some music or watching a video on the side. Um, you're not giving it like your full attention. You're not playing to improve. You're not being critical of... Um, when you make a mistake or or analyzing the whole game like how you, how you should or are the most potential that you have and then there's active playing when you're like consistently focused on the game you're um very aware of what's happening you're 
very um, mindful of what you're doing, right? Like all of your shots have a purpose. Um, you're very, you're trying to like keep up with like everything that's happening around you, all these things. And I think that's a huge difference, right? Like if you're constantly playing actively in, the, in the, that active state, you're going to improve so much faster, right? And this includes things like maybe going into the training ground and spending some time like paying a lot of attention on how you do your shots, how you uh, how are you using your skills, um, where do you go wrong, right? Like when you mess up and you get killed, do you stop for a second and think to yourself, okay, what could I have done differently there so that this doesn't happen again in the future when I'm in that same situation? And I think that makes a huge difference in how, mu how much and how fast you can improve. Like two people playing the same amount of time can have vastly different amount of improvements just based on their training regime. Yeah, it's and it's hard. It's hard to constantly be thinking about what you're doing. It takes yeah. like it, it's playing on autopilot is how we play video games. We play video games yeah. to escape real life. Normally we play to put ourselves yeah. in an autopilot mode. So it's hard to actually be consistently thinking about what and the, doing, the thing is, actually, they're they're both valid, right? Like, there's no like right and wrong way. It just depends on how you want to experience and play the game. But yeah, one exactly. one of the You're modes, spending your money on it. yeah, one of the <laughs> modes, it's better for the competitive part. The other mode might be pe better if you're just trying to enjoy yourself, have fun, play with your family, or you know, not being like hyper competitive. You just you're just trying out for the fun of it. Yeah, this actually ties in really well to an email that we got. So I'm going to read it real quick. It says, hey, guys, I love the show, and I have a question for you. How much should I believe the ratings I get in third-party sites like Oversumo, which you've talked about quite a bit on the show? Um, I ask because my ratings have diverged from what is in in-game. I was a bit sad to only rate as bronze in the current season, yet in Oversumo, my, my performance is consistently ranked as gold or higher, sometimes even up to Grandmaster. Do I just have bad luck? Do I typically find myself the best player on the losing team during placement matches? But maybe the Oversumer algorithm is just off and I'm actually terrible. Or maybe I'm a glory hog who racks up the frags at the expense of the team. I'm a console player and a soldier main, if that matters. So, we, I mean, I think, yeah, we've already talked about Oversumo. Over, Oversumo doesn't, it gives you stats that don't tell you whether or not you won or lost. Because Oversumo won't tell you who you killed when. It won't tell you when you used your ultimate. It won't tell you if you peeled for your supports. It won't tell you if you communicated with your team. It won't tell you. It won't tell you a ton of stuff that actually is what ends up winning games. So if you're Roadhog, and maybe you're doing a lot of damage because you're shooting at whatever a diva for the whole game, and then you look over Sumo and says, "Wow, your damage is way higher than most Roadhogs. Look at all the time you're shooting at Diva." Meanwhile, while you and Diva are just playing footsie with each other in the corner, the rest of the enemy team just killed your supports that you weren't even close to, that you weren't peeling for, and, you, and then you lose the game. And then from your point of view, because you're halfway on autopilot, circling back, you think, "Well, great. Now here I am shooting this guy. I was doing fine, and then I look at the kill feed, and my team died. What went wrong?" You know, that's when you get to the point where you're saying, "I'm the best player on on this terrible team that's losing." This, this comes from active, you need to actively think and you should actually start streaming. If you're a console player, anybody can stream at any time. It's really easy. You can link you can link your uh, Twitch to your PlayStation and just go straight from there. And just don't do it, I mean, for the views, just do it so you can look back and see because it's way easier to see after you're done where you went wrong. And you can see that on that Hanamura game, you can see, oh, that's right. My Mercy was right next to me and she was getting killed that whole time. I saw her little health bar as she was healing me and instead I was just shooting Diva instead of peeling for her and that's why we lost. And you don't see that in game. So that, that that's probably I don't trust Oversumo that much. So I guess what I one so. one other thing to Let's have our no, stat guy talk about this. <laughs> I'm just gonna interject super quick over here. One thing to keep in mind about Oversumo is that the stats they're giving you are not stats compared to everyone, but they're stats compared right. to the people in your rank. So in your rank. Yeah. So let's say you're playing McCree and you're let's say you're in bronze and you suddenly get really good at McCree, you get the hang of it, you're in the flow, and you are killing it with McCree in bronze. If you go to over Sumo, you probably show up and a McCree, as McCree having like master or grandmaster stats. And the only thing that means is that you, compared to the other people in your rank, are overperforming. And in over Sumo, they, they give you like this like Overwatch ranks um, to calculate your performance. But Master rank in over sumo doesn't mean master rank in Overwatch. It just means that you're doing really good compared to the people Enough in your rank. to get out of the current tier, maybe. Yeah, like if, if you're, you're if you're playing your a hero, not being just an empty puzzle. Exactly. <laughs> if you're playing a hero at that level and over sumo is showing you that, 
it probably means that if you're playing it, you're you're you might climb because you are probably killing it so much. Yep, yeah. and I mean, at the end of the day, especially in 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 bronze, if, if that's where you are, it's it's not so much about it mechanics, anyways, which is what a lot of over sumo stats will show you, but more about strategy. And I can actually test this really well because I've gotten I got a um, Orion gave me a PC. I've I had I got two accounts to Diamond on PC. I haven't played in like a couple months. I went back to the console for a bit, but I am terrible with mechanics on PC. I I have never played a first person shooter. I've spent my whole life playing on a controller, and I could get the Diamond on both. I got the Diamond both times within like two three weeks of 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 ranked and and it was just purely uh like strategy and working with my team game understanding ga just game knowledge can get you to diamond i guess is what i'm trying to say i can 100 percent because i can guarantee that everybody who's a pc player if you're still listening at this point uh is better than me mechanically <laughs> at a keyboard and mouse i can guarantee you that you are and and so if you're worried about mechanics that's that's not probably the problem because i can because i can if i can do it twice without with basically never hitting another enemy hero because I can't aim. It, it's more about strategy, which Oversumer is not telling you. It's a bit of a side tangent, but it's still important. So, so you want to wrap us up here? Yeah, I just want to kind of make a, a comment and hopefully not be too judgmental about Oversumo. Again, I think it's a bit of a controversial topic for the reasons that we, we mentioned. Make sure you understand why you're looking at the statistics to begin with. Are you looking at the statistics because you want an ego stroke? Do you want to say, yes, I am GM, even though I'm in whatever tier? Are you looking at it so that you can gauge improvement and see, like, help help kind of decipher what maybe went wrong? Um, I, I personally don't think that Oversumo is the right right tool to do that. It does have some nice features, but the different kind of big websites. So basically, there's... there's um, there's Master Overwatch, there's Overbuff, and then there's the Oversumo app. Each one of these three use a different method to calculate your statistics. And the one that Oversumo uses is basically takes your statistic damage and then divides by the number of deaths that you had. So let's say that I'm playing in a Grandmaster game, right? And I have 20 deaths in that game, right? Because I just keep getting killed. But then maybe I get rezzed. It may turn out that my statistics are horrible and, and Oversumo says I'm bronze. The way that the other two websites work, uh, Master Overwatch and Overbuff, is they do it by some unit of time. Uh, Overbuff does it stat per game, and uh, Master Overwatch does it basically stats per minute, which is actually a small subtopic that we could chat about. But, or is ten, but I think if they also have a per 10 minute thing too, but that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. The point is Blizzard actually doesn't give per minute stats exactly. And there's some right. brokenness on their end on Blizzard's end, but you can see the difference there, right? The 17 deaths would have no consequence to damage on overbuff or master overwatch. So helping you gauge your impact is the whole point of statistics. And just make sure you understand um, what you're doing. One small side note, Make sure you understand, if you're going to use Oversumo, what each of these ranks mean. What does Gold 1 mean? Gold 1 um, actually means you're in like the, you're in the uh, bottom 10% of all players, right? And that's not actually what Gold is, right? Gold 4 into Platinum 1, which is the middle of all the ranks of Oversumo, is what you should expect to be at on average if you're not going to climb, because that's the 50th percentile, right? You expect that after every match that you're either plat or gold four. That's what you expect, generally speaking, um, if you're not going to Break climb. even. To break yeah. even. If you're hitting Grandmaster, that means that for them, they think they're doing, um, you did a, you had a fantastic game, quote, right? So you should be, you, that was probably a win. <laughs> you probably gained some SR from that. Uh, final little comment um, on Oversumo, just like a word of caution. If you look at what they say, they they claim that the rank they give you, Grandmaster Master, is spot on. They're claiming that that's what, what you actually are. Uh, but then if you look at the fine print, if you look at their data and charts they show, they're off by a 1,000 SR almost in each direction. So if they say you're plat, you could be silver, you could be master. You don't know, <laughs> right? So their statistics are limited. So just be careful there. And like, again, I just want to finish with the thought that make sure that you're using the stats to see if you're improving. That's the whole point. If your damage is low and you're like, you know what, I'm not killing enough stuff as DPS, um, use the statistics to gauge your progress. If you feel like you're dying too much as mercy, use the statistics to see your deaths per game go down each game. 
Um, that's the whole point of stats, and, that, and that's kind of where I think we can kind of wrap it up. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. That was a good answer to your Archie. question, Tom. All right, I'm going to uh, rapid fire the rest of these and kind of consolidate them because a lot of them are kind of similar. Okay. So uh, Vansity Boy and Chipmunk says, well, basically, what are your settings for console? Uh, they want to know the, the secret sauce to, to getting good. Uh, secret so the secret sauce, sauce here is 55-55. Uh, I keep horizontal and vertical the exact same. Uh, I have um, I have aim ease at 3, and I have um, – oh, I forget the other – aim smoothing at 99. So those the, those are the stats I use. I, I think the, the actual numbers aren't so much as important as consistency. You, you want to keep – your your settings as similar as you can between heroes because it's it's gonna get your muscle memory going. I've talked about that before though. Um, so 55, 55. And they have a lot of uh, sliders now, so you'll have to look up what each one does. But aim smoothing is at 99. I know it's nine out of 100. It actually makes a big difference. And aim ease is at three out of 100. So um, and I keep that the same for all heroes, which is really hard because it's different than than PC when you've got a huge trackpad. So if you're playing Genji, maybe you can just move. You can just move your hand faster. There's a limit how fast you can move a, a, a joystick. So it's it's hard to play Genji the same sensitivity you want to play McCree. But if you want to, we talked about active playing. If if you want to, you want your brain space thinking about strategy in the game. You want to be thinking, does Reinhardt have his ult? Should I should I get to high ground? You don't want to be concentrating on actually aiming. And so I, I would say keep your sensitivity whatever you choose. It doesn't have to be what I chose, but it, you should try to keep it as consistent as possible. Because if you keep changing it, if you have different per hero, it's going to be really hard to. To get that muscle memory going, I also move jump to L3. That's the left stick that really helps because you want to you're jumping often and you don't want to take your hands off the uh, the aim stick. So uh, Van City Boy asked, "How do you practice us warm up?" I normally just play quick play or or a arcade. I don't like tutorial uh, the uh, practice mode because the bots don't move like humans do. Um, what do you think? Uh, sorry to inter interrupt, but what do you think about free for all team deathmatch? Oh yeah, uh, those two definitely free for all definitely. Um, it, it really depends on how the queue times. Like I said, queue times are huge. I don't want to warm up and spend six minutes, but just anything that there are people in, I think is is probably good as long as you get to choose the heroes. Keeping in mind like what you think you're going to be playing for that gaming session, because that actually changes for me whether I'm going to go in kind of from a DPS mindset or tank mindset based on what SR I'm currently at. So then I'll make, I'm practice those heroes. But yeah, definitely yeah, free for all is awesome too. That works, that works really well because that's just all mechanics, right? You just spawn and you're instantly shooting people. So that, that's a good one too. Uh, Excalibur said, what kind of mindset tips do you have when you sit down and push for top 500? Um, because I, I've gone in and out of it a lot. And so you'll, you'll deviate a lot. I think not thinking about it is good. Once you get that close, it's really easy to start doing math about how close you are. You know, you're sitting at 4120 and you're like, I need two wins. If every single win, if both wins are 31 SR and I'll get it. Not thinking about SR, I think really helps and just focusing on the game itself. Um, also filling making sure that you're playing what's best for the team and not for yourself is especially important i think it's inversely proportional to like how close i am to top 500 is how much how selfish i'm going to be like is this a game i play genji no once once i'm making a push top 500 they need my zarya they don't need my genji I'm, i'll be honest with myself you know I, it'd be fun to play genji but it's not gonna help so now, uh controversially cs can you comment on the reverse of that if you're lower in the tiers because i had conversations with people today about like 60 ps comps being the right decision if you're in given scenarios yeah i uh i actually think that's true too i think the lower the lower you if you go to get down to like platinum i think there was another question yeah someone asking how to go from from gold to diamond plat to diamond i it, i think it's different there because it's the wild west and because there's so much different there's so much skill variance in that in that um area it's insane you could have one you could do a game and and, and it's not like everyone is close to the skill with how compact it can be and so there, I think it, it probably is better to play exactly to your strengths because it depends on how good you have to know yourself again. But like sometimes you just can't you can't trust your team as much as you want to. It, it's probably just best to, to say, you know, screw the meta. Your team's probably not if you're in platinum, the odds that you're having in, on console that you're going to have six people on mics that are working together is little to none anyways. And that's really where the meta comes in. The meta is dependent on the fact that you're working as a team, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you're two, 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 if your tanks aren't peeling for your healers, which are healing your DPS, that doesn't matter. Huge point. Yeah. So, so if the, the meta kind of goes away when communication and teamwork goes away. And so that, it makes a lot more sense to play, I guess it's playing for yourself, but it really is also for the team. If, especially when, if you're in plat, it's, it's a lot less likely you play a lot. You've been, so you're probably not as comfortable with, with, 
a wider variety of, of roles and heroes. So it does make it, it does change the lower you go, which is probably you know that's where most people are at. So, um, but then again, it, it's 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 game by game basis. Sometimes you get into black game and you'll see someone who has 300 hours. They're a one trick something. And you're like, go ahead and play that. You're probably be pretty good. You're probably pretty good at that. The only reason you're still in this this ranking is that you don't always get to play that and people rage because they say you have 300 hours in widow and they don't want you to play widow but i trust you so that's the quick answer to that question tips um don't think about your rank when you're pushing for top 500 if you're close there just think about winning the game and um if you stop thinking about it i think it, that's usually when it happens for me is when i've stopped thinking about it so yep good okay advice. so oh sorry Oh no, I was saying good advice. Um, we can close it out with this last one. I'm actually really interested in this one, in this last question uh, submitted by Bio Shrimp. She asked, so we now have an officially licensed by Microsoft Mouse keypad and coming soon to Xbox. Um, PS4 already has a licensed one designed specifically for FPS games. Um, but what is your opinion in general? Do you think this will make pe many people switch off controller? And I even point... Uh, how can it affect Overwatch play? And can it remain fair for people playing Overwatch if you have both? So um, even though the the console might support the keyboard mouse and it's official, that doesn't mean Overwatch itself supports it, which I don't think Overwatch does. There is a licensed mouse and keyboard for PlayStation, but I don't believe you can plug it in and try it, but there's no um, mouse and keyboard settings anywhere in the ui of of the console version of overwatch like you can't change your mouse sensitivity and and map buttons it, it doesn't support it i think that was an active decision by blizzard to not support keyboard and mouse inputs so i don't even think well i don't know about i can't speak for xbox so xbox is getting this maybe they have it i, I would doubt it um even though this has come in it, it, the people that are doing it are still going to be doing it in the cheaty way where they get an adapter um I'm almost positive about that. I'm almost positive that this won't work for... It, it works for the console, but that doesn't mean it works for the game. And it, and if it did work for the game, let's just say hypothetically it, it would, um, it can't be a fair game if there's some people are using keyboard and mouse and some people are using controller. It just... It can't be. Uh, it's what it's obviously... I mean, I've seen a Diamond PC player is as good, at least mechanically, as a GM console player. I've seen... I've been at both. I've seen the Diamond McCree... I've seen the Andres out there. The good <laughs> McCrees, not the McCrappies, and they're they're just as good as GM. That's that's about where the cutoff is, and so, and so it can't ever be fair. I mean, if you if you want to play mouse and keyboard, I would just I would go to PC. So I don't. Luckily, I don't think we're gonna get there because I don't think Blizzard will let it ever be officially and supported. Let me let me ask you something. I'm just curious. Do you run into these people a lot while playing for Top 500? A lot of people playing with mouse and keyboards, or can you tell? It's really hard to tell because there are some people who are very very good. Um, mechanically with a, with a controller and there's no the the, mo the biggest tell is flick shots because it's re it's really really hard to do a flick shot with a controller Fast. because because even if you move your joystick all the way to the right um you stop to go through the intermediate steps and it's it's really hard to flick shot so you'll see a, a widow moves a certain way it's not really how accurate they are it's more about how they move and and that's and, and i hesitate to like con uh ask people about this or accuse people because it takes away from their accomplishments. If they are really are like a widow maker that has 400 hours and they just got really good with the controller. I don't want to accuse him of doing that and take it away. I know if I was that good, I wouldn't want it, but um, it's hard yeah. to say. Yeah. Hey, I want to kind of, I mean, I've seen some, Oh, let's uh, no, let's, I let's, I let's switch that comment. talk. He's gonna explode over here. He's <laughs> okay. to say something. <laughs> no, I, I, just a joke, just a joke. Um, so I click, there was, there's a link in the show notes showing what this thing is. And I, the first thing that sticks out to me is the price. Um, $150 for this Tactical Assault Commander Pro 1, which basically is not a, <sighs> by the way, it's not a keyboard. <laughs> it's basically like WASD, a handful of other squarish buttons oh, yeah, um, that you can potentially machine. use. It, it, and it's even got it's even got a game stick on the thumb of your left hand, right? So it's not a keyboard. It's <laughs> kind of like an huh. extra mouse-ish weird thing. Anyway. So this might actually be support. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. So after so the buttons there. I, I wanted to. I wanted to make kind of a, a comment. Maybe you guys can can also dis discuss this with me. PC is very much quote unquote pay to win. You hear about people buying like crazy mice. I mean crazy keyboards. Buying 144 hertz monitors. Buying. Um, you know, people are not playing on a i3. Generally, people don't yeah, prefer to play on an i i3 with tiny like crappy everything 
they want to play on the top, top, top. That's why gaming rigs cost so much. Um, but in my impression of consoles, that's not the case. The whole premise of that is that you can get your base, you can get your console, comes with the controller, and you can just jump in and play. So, CS, do you think that, have I kind of hit the nail on the head? That's kind of what the culture is meant to be, and this is disrupting that. This is kind of, you know, this is a pay-to-win type of type of scenario. In the same case that it is for uh, for PC. Yeah, it's a, that definitely. I mean, the equal playing field is is a huge part of it too, and and this jump would be much bigger, I think, than any jump a pay-to-win you can get on PC. I mean, sure, you can up your FPS, get 140 hertz monitor, you can get better equipment, but the difference between going from a controller to a mouse is is I think bigger than all those. I mean, you have pro players like Emong from Selfless months ago. He pl- he was playing on a crappy laptop for a lot of time, then he got to a pro team. So I don't think you could do that with a controller though. That's the difference. Is like me playing on a controller. I'm never gonna be on Selfless. Never in a million years. I wouldn't be um, the Mercy sub. They wouldn't put me in. So I, I think there's a huge difference <laughs> there. Um, but you're right. The the basic idea of everyone's on the evil on the level playing field in terms of locked FPS and and you're getting what you pay for is a, is a big point. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking about it earlier, and like it's like the like an analogy would be like having people playing football, but the people playing with controllers have no gear. The people playing with mouse and keyboard are fully stacked, helmets, armor, like everything you would ever need. (laughs) And you're playing full contact. And I feel like that's kind of how it feels. Even if like the people with a controller or the no gear are incredibly good, they're just at that inherent disadvantage versus the other people. And they can be equally as skilled and it not matter. Exactly. So get trampled over. Or break your arm trying. That's actually a really good point because I think you you see uh, somebody you'll see a clip of some console player that on all the like on Reddit and clips you'll see intermittent videos of like a console play and you'll know it's a console play because their their movements clunkier they're not aiming as fast and it's it's easy to confuse that with actual it's skill like it's really really hard to do what they're doing with a controller it's it's harder to do so we're confusing like how skilled the player is with what is showing on the screen and how good it looks on the mm-hmm. screen. You just assume because they're aiming slower, it, it's not as skilled as a PC player, which sometimes is just not true. Like, It's amazing how accurate these people can be with this little jump, this little thumbstick that's got like one centimeter of movement. And they're making these plays that PC players can make with this huge one foot by one foot radius of their entire arm. Um, and I think that's a big... So you see, uh, you know, console play, it's not nearly as good. The skill, I think, is 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 the muscle memory important. is just complete opposite you know it's like yeah. north pole south pole yeah those are those are all good points i think is that all i think that's all the questions yeah i think i think i said everything is there anything, anything else, else you guys want to add over here yes it's your platform my man <laughs> yeah i don't know i just want to um i didn't want to scare away the pc people so i didn't want to talk too much more about console if, if well already th- here, this, they... this one was specifically <laughs> labeled as console episode this so is, i think we're right, in the clear that's true that's true, that's true. <laughs> Um, it's, I mean, if you're playing, I think you should play with, with, a a headset, like beyond comms, I think is, is something I would tell the, the PlayStation community. Cause I thought it would get better. It still hasn't. People aren't talking still. Um, and, and it's huge. It, like uh, We were talking about how over sumo it doesn't tell you how well you're working with your team. It doesn't tell you the interaction. And a lot of people, they're maybe not talking, but they're in chat. Like they're listening. They'll get in the voice chat. So um, I think it's a great way. Oh, sweet. I see still here. It's still a great way to um, to improve by talking to people and, and finding out and maybe finding people to group with because it feels really isolated on, on console. It always has. So, But besides that, I think we've covered everything. For more set, if you want to hear more about settings, because I could have gone way more in depth about like controller settings, uh, I've been, uh, this is like my fourth time, and at least two of them I've talked way more detail about settings. So you can go back and listen to those. Those haven't really changed. They've added a few more sliders, but. Um, Bioshrimp, actually, I want to answer this really quick. Bioshrimp says, CS, do you prefer PC now over console now that you play both? PC is definitely a better experience. The, the, the player base is older. Um, the people are better. Are, are better. It's cool to actually find out. Um, di- I think Diamond, maybe high Diamond to low Masters is where, at least uh, strategically and definitely mechanically, definitely mechanically, maybe not strategically, it matches up to like the top of console, which is a bummer. But uh, I'm not afraid to admit it. I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to say, you know, GM, GM console is not the same as, as GM PC. To, to be sure. fair, though, you're, you're 
I guess you play Zarya, right? But you're kind of like still soldier DPS and stuff, though, right? So I mean, for yeah. so you're playing the mechanically demanding, and you're saying that. Yeah, that's true. If I if I if yeah, I I've was heard PVP Twitch say the same thing. He's a he's an Xbox guy. Like he was top top 500 Xbox, and he's insane at flexing on PC now. And he's like, yeah, the experience is totally better. Like he's echoing pretty much every point that CS brought up. Yeah, it really is. The only reason I'm I'm playing on console right now too is that I'm just I'm just super busy and so I don't I, you, when you get to diamond on PC, I mean Andres, you know this. It seems like I queue up for a game on PC and everybody's at least a silver border. Like these guys have played so much <laughs> Overwatch and I have, <laughs> so these guys already have all this time with keyboard and mouse and they probably played maybe a first person shoot before this versus me who has a total of like 70 hours. And so I know I'd have to invest a lot of time to get really good with the keyboard and mouse before I get past diamond. Because strategy, like I said, can only get you so far. If you can't shoot anybody and, right. and make it, you're never going to get to. Uh, yeah. So, and I just you got to be able to I take can... action on your strategy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So exactly. um, PC is definitely a better experience. And I still suggest anyone that has the ability to, to switch. Um, the community is nicer too. So. <laughs> You do have the more veteran community on the PC. And, you know, you, you are welcome to switch back and forth. You don't have to choose one. Yeah, sometimes, like, sometimes it's really nice just to have my console never drops frames. My console never glitches out. It's very consistent. It always works. It always looks beautiful. Um, there, There's hardly ever any problems with it. Uh, uh, yeah, so there's there's definitely advantages to console too. I have a lot of friends there. That's another reason. I've been actually trying to play a little more console lately since I got on the PS4. We we should actually try to play together sometime. But the thing about it is that <clears throat> because I haven't played console like really really played in such a long time, um, I just feel so clumsy in the in the console, and I get like frustrated because I have like the experience from PC, right? And I know what I want to do. I know how to do it. But then when I go perform it in the controller, it just comes out like this fart of action. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. That's and, exactly what I felt. On and PC. it frustrates me so much. <laughs> I'll just play soldier and I'll be like, all right, time to uh, like five tap that guy in the head. And then I aim and I just like totally miss all five shots. And it feels like you just got a new body. It's like, no, I didn't tell you to do that. Just I know it's rocket to the rhino on. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, get it. <laughs> what I end up doing really is just, I just jiggle my mouse really fast in the, in the area of the person. So that some of my shots hit, it's a really good way to bandaid. Not <laughs> nail the aim. If you just like the spray and pray method. It, it kind of works. Or the fart I want to watch you record your <laughs> games on PC so I can watch. And just yeah, like, I got to play the game CS once. That was embarrassing. All the way across the map, try to right click. <laughs> Nobody knew I was doing that aim method until I got accidentally got play the game, and, and everyone just saw me just like jiggling my crosshairs around, and <laughs> and of course PC has chat, so they're gonna make fun of me if I have to see it. I can't. I can't that aim. So oh, it's fun times, even the tour maids are making fun of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I think that's all right. Well, I think that's gonna do it. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. should do it. All right. Um, well, let's close out the show so um, Jake here can go do his boss job uh, that he was telling us about in the pre-show. If you want to ask him about it, please do. Just do it in the Discord. Um, <laughs> it's really interesting. But um, if you guys want to support the show, the best way to do it is to uh, help us out by running over to iTunes. We got three new freaking iTunes reviews this week, which is great. We got two from U.S. and one from Canada. We got Mind1555, Fan of Man from USA, and then we got Vincent Dog 10 who actually is a YouTube listener and made the effort to walk all the way over to his PC. Cause I don't know if he actually was watching the, the show on his, on his iPhone or whatever, you know, whatever, and gave us an iTunes review and you can do the same thing. And that, that means a lot to me. If you do this and you actually hop platforms to go uh, give us an iTunes review. So I really appreciate this. Um, thank you so much for that. And uh, in addition to that, if you guys want to support us, financially give us a little tip uh, monthly or weekly depending on what your financial situation is and your desires you can help us out on patreon.com slash omniclap you can support us there it helps us get to blizzcon it helps us upgrade our equipment it helps us do literally everything better on the show um just anything from technical stuff to logistical things it's just amazing with what we can do with money uh when we have it for specifically the show it's it's really really great and we deeply appreciate all of those people, especially the new patrons this week. Ginger Sasquatch is the greatest name ever. And I am pleased to say that we're going to be able to read this name off every week because he's a Diamond patron. So thank you so much for your new donations on the show. 
and uh, Matthew J for jumping in on the team on the science squad. In addition to this, we got our special diamond sponsors joining us every week. We have Chris DePlaya, Good Apollo, Lysome, Magic, Michael Critz, Not Muadib, RC Crispy, Ricky Ticky, S- Sketchy Nonsense Podcast, Silverback, Tragic Zach, and Trinium. Thank you guys again for your continued support. And if you guys want to support us a different way financially and you want to wear and rep us at BlizzCon, maybe you can head over to our merch store on the website. Um, it's on omniclab.com slash links, and you just click the little button. It's right there. And you can support us there. You can also join a part of the community. And uh, you know what? CS, you're an admin. You do your job. You can promote the community this week. <laughs> oh, yeah. The community is so awesome. I've been there for a year now. And uh, everybody's just so nice to each other. It's nice to have a community that you don't hide behind animidity. animidity? I don't know if I said that right. Probably not. But everybody <laughs> knows each other. And so it's good to uh, group up. And then these game nights are really fun, guys. There's a game night happening this Friday, like he said. Um, it happens on console, too. And we have a blast. We normally go from like 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. my time. I'm there the whole time. So is our mods like XCal. Um, and we're laughing the whole time. We have we we have tons of um, preset game modes recorded that I have. I've saved like 15 of them. And they are insane. Insanely fun. You guys should show up if you haven't before. Um, you'll meet new people to play with. You're going to have a lot of good time. And then you'll have somebody to group up with. Because people that go to this range of all SRs, from bronze all the way to... Well, all the way to me. So um, you should definitely show up. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. And it's not just PC, guys. I told you we have console ones going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We normally get almost we get like twelve people normally, which is good. Yeah, it's a good number. All right. Um, I think that's gonna do it. Uh, if you guys want to find the extended show notes, which is like the hyper detailed version of what the website is, you can click the link in the very bottom. It says full extended show notes to go to the Google Drive. I think it's time to wrap things up. So we're going to rapid fire, do our plugs here. So Andres, where can people find you? If you want to find me, look me up on Twitter at iPlayGames. You can also find my music blog over at soundcloud.com slash iPlayMusic. And you can find my podcast adventures over at audioblender.studio. CS, where can people bug you? They can find me at twitch.tv, twitch.tv. Dot, or I don't even know how to say the switch, Twitch thing. The Twitch is it CS22. The new thing, yeah. Um, it's CS22. It's not CS like the two um, letters like my name is here. It's C-S-E-E and then Y-E-S because CS was too short. So CS22. I occasionally stream. I stream about maybe once a week. Um, I just streamed when I was in Top 500, and then I actually lost it. So if you want to see what a uh, Top Console looks like, you can see it there. Spoilers, it's uh, it's it's not – it's not top 500 PC, but it's fun, kind of fun if you're interested to see what it looks like. So it's still um, good though. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So yeah, that's, and that's Switch? it. Switch. Uh, you can find me a number of places. Uh, Twitter. My personal Twitter is uh, the Switch Fox. Um, if you want to follow Omnic Meta, which is at Omnic Meta on Twitter, I post whenever an article comes out, whenever I'm doing some analysis. If you want to just check out the pages and other types of stuff I've done in the past, I do meta reports usually about weekly console and PC and I do analysis of patches, you know, how big of an impact was the patches. You can check it out at uh, omnicmeta.com. I also want to say you can always bug me in uh, the discord for um, Omnic lab. So if you want to find me, if you want to uh, talk to me about stats or the game, or you want to even jump in and play some, some matches with me, you can find me there. And again, game night, this, this, uh, this Friday, October 27th. So be there. Absolutely. And I cannot cut and paste this website to save my life into the chat, but you can also find me um, with the tags, not Rob on Twitch, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can find my other podcast about Hearthstone. We just, I literally just posted the show about an hour before we went live on Twitch. So, um, we're talking some lore about Garrosh Hellscream and it's part two of three. And we actually did a pre part with uh, Gromash, which is pretty interesting stuff. Um, Eve Martin does an excellent job doing that. And my other co-host, um, Grant, put together a really fun Pilfered Power Druid deck for some people to looking to not just be competitive but have some fun this week. Uh, did a little bit of a different flair. We got some really cool Halloween news over there that we covered as well. Um, that's called Velen's Chosen Podcast in your podcasting apps, or you can go to velenschosen.com to find the website. Um, I also have another project called Concept Craft. If you guys can check that out, it's called Concept Craft Podcast. 
I think that's going to do it for episode number 75 of the Omnic Lab, the super show with Switch and CS. And again, these guys are part of the Discord community, and you can always reach them there. And thank you guys so much for being willing to do this. This was not actually that big of a deal for a scheduling nightmare as I thought it would be initially. Uh, we've been planning this for months, guys. Like, basically a month <laughs> and a half we've been trying to plan this. So I'm really glad that we could finally get some things together for the console, guys, and we'd love to have you guys back. Yeah, ton of fun. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, remember, guys, don't be a lab rep, be a scientist. We'll see you all next week. Adios. Bye Keep bye. those Pachamaris tight. Oh, no. The outro music is not working oh, today, no, guys. Just... For guys, some weird trapped. reason. <laughs> no. It's a trap. It feels so awkward with no music at the end. <laughs> well, I'm going to leave you guys with this little... a different song then. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you guys with the OG. Oh, nice. What? That one's not there either? What the hell happened to them? <laughs> All right, well, we'll leave you guys with this one. Live show. Just sing it, Andres. Just. <laughs> there you go. Leave some fail fish in the chat.